Well, I'll, 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 I'll ask Leah's. Goa is, is the easiest because you don't move around a lot, which people, some people really like. But um, in Goa, Leo, what's, what's like your mammal pile? I mean, we got a very small mammal list. We do not have many compared to the That's other good. parts of India. But uh, yeah. it's, for a start, Goa is quite good as, yeah. Because it's more yeah. relaxed, easy birding. I mean, the food, culture, everything. It's, it's all set up for Western tourists. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and so, Steve, even Mar, our, 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 you know, like, my chair is squeaking here. Um, Lake Goa is like, a, I mean, it gets a lot of Europeans and Scandinavians come down to enjoy the beaches and that kind of thing, right, Leo? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so it's been, and then, it's been, the infrastructure has already been built up over the years because it's, it's been doing it for years. Yeah. And then, and then recently, but the Indian middle class has discovered Goa, and they too enjoy the beaches and the and the wildlife and all that. Uh, I mean, they enjoy more the, frankly speaking, the booze than the beaches. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, and then. Um, um, no, it's a and, and, and then, and then, because alcohol is more expensive in the other parts of India than compared to Goa. So they all really, come. yeah. And that's just because it's taxed more. It's taxed more. In Goa, in Goa, yeah. It's, yeah, so it's much cheaper in Goa. Oh, we darn. Yeah. And then, um, uh, let me think, let me think. Oh, so what, so on, on that 14, what, what, what is it? What's, I, I don't, I think it's 14 days, 13 nights we're in Goa. Yeah. Leo. Yeah. That's, um, how many bird species typically? Range is fine. Easy, but. easy 270. And if you push it a bit, you can get up to 310 species. Okay. So 270 to 310, or was that 270 to 300? 270 to 310. Okay. okay. And Charles, if we wanted to hit all of the, you know, you know the, how many in all of the trips, just what are those numbers? Because it, it wasn't on the website. Yeah. And it, it yeah, and it, and it kind of should be, but it doesn't always get it there. But um, on um, northern India, Leo, which is six, 16 days, 15 nights, that's what, 380 to 420 species? That's 380 to 420, yeah. Okay, um, now... Northeast India. Northeast India, the, the uh, Assam and... The typical the, trip, yeah, yeah. The typical trip is around 420 plus. Yeah, okay. Okay, so hold on. And, so the Northeast India, Assam is 420 plus. That's the right. Northern India, is that the tiger one? That's the tiger exactly. one. Exactly. Okay, and the tiger one has how many? 370 plus. 370 plus, okay. And I said 380 to 420, yeah. which I think yeah. is good. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then... Um, and then north northwest, yeah. That's fewer birds, right? That's fewer birds, not that species fewer birds, yeah. That's like what three? Northwest is around, uh, I would say, um, three fifty to three eighty. Three three hundred three fifty. Oh, so even as low as like three twenty or something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The Northwest is a super lister spot, and then it has an extension to get Asiatic lion, yeah. which for some people is, you know, a big deal. They're all, they're, they're, there are cat lovers out there. Where's our crowd, man? Did you send them the right link, Arturo? Yes, he did. If you see these it. ones are in, <laughs> the rest got it in. Because <laughs> I'm on it. So, so it's just the four of us, right? No, Can you hear me? Yeah. So that, yeah, was you can hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm Dave Cook. Oh, I live in Seattle, Washington. 
10, there's 10 participants out, out there. Hey, man, I just had no idea so many people jumped on. I apologize. <laughs> hey, this is Charles Cole, all be in the park except for international birding. Hey, we were just killing some time waiting for more people to get on, but 10 is plenty, so we'll do our thing. Dave, thanks for speaking up. I um, truly just didn't have my button set right, I guess. Um, anyway, <laughs> welcome to the Partnership for International Birding Zoom video conference on birding in, in India. Um, I'll just take a two two minutes to lay down the ground rules for the call. Um, we have found that everybody should just have open mics unless they have a lot of background noise. And we welcome questions throughout the conference. If you feel like you're not getting your question in, um, you know, either chime up like Dave Cook just, just did or um, just text the question in. Um, Zoom is set up that it sort of gets on the loudest voice. So um, if you're not getting in, just text the question in and we'll get it asked. Um, um, and truly, we kind of find if we keep, keep these things kind of loosey-goosey, um, easy peasy and inviting people to ask questions, that makes for a better um, video conference. Um, so just a quick agenda today before I introduce Leo D'Souza. Um, we do offer seven different birding tours in, in, in India. And between all these tours, you could see 900 bird species in India. Um, these, these tours include, and, and, and sort of the agenda for today is we'll spend a little bit of time on southern India, Goa, and the Western Ghats. And then we'll take a little break for questions and conversation. And then we'll talk about Northwest India, Gujarat, and, Ra and Rajasthan. Um, and then again, we'll break for questions and conversation. And then Northern India, Tigers and Taj Mahal. And then we'll break for questions. Leo thinks we're going to get to Northeast in India today. Um, I would be thrilled if we got that far. Um, <laughs> but that would cover all seven tours and all four major birding regions in the country. Um, and at some point, we'll just take a little break and brainstorm on questions or just do a final wrap up and probably at about um, 10 minutes left, we'll kind of move towards final wrap up. Um, okay, a brief introduction to Leo D'Souza. He is the guy in the blue shirt there. You can wave, Leo. Hi. He's going to chuckle. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, Leo yeah, has been a bird sense. guide. Leo has been a bird guide for 25 years, and most Indian bird guides recognize him as sort of the top expert on India birding. Um, Leo has w led well over 200 India birding tours and all over the country, again, the Northeast, Northern in India, Northwest, and Southern in India. Um, Southern India is where he makes his life at home in Goa. He also spends part of the year in the United Kingdom where he currently has a new baby with his wife, Jennifer. Um, Jen and Leo um, kind of work as a team do and have done logistics and support for over 1,500 um, birding tours in the Indian subcontinent, including Sri Lanka, Bhutan, and Nepal. Um, and uh, truly, he's one of my best friends in the birding business, um, and partially because he laughs at all of my jokes, which I love. He loves it when I say that, but he does. He laughs at every single one of my, la of my jokes. Well, that's um, just to keep you happy, Charles. They're not that good. <laughs> um, and all of our clients give rave reviews for Leo's guiding skills um, and his friendly personality, which I think you'll see today. Um, he's, and he's truly, he's an expert at keeping groups functioning well together with, you know, sometimes you get a lot of different personality to keep the group moving along well together and getting on the birds together. Um, with no further ado, I give you Leo D'Souza. Go, go, my friend. Don't well, be, thanks, don't Charles. Be <laughs> thanks, Charles, for the introduction. Hi, everybody. Well, as Charles has mentioned, I will take you through an overview of birding in various parts of India. We'll try and cover as much as we can. And uh, we'll introduce you to a selection of bird tours that we offer with Partnership for International Birding. I'll also be showing you a few images as we go through. And uh, beginning with this one, 
that is there at the moment is the spectacular Himalayan monal. It is in the pheasant family, found in the forest and shrublands at elevations above 2,000 to 4,500, mostly on our Northeast India tour. Well, in case any of you have any questions, you can forward them to Arturo and Charles and we'll get back to you as we move along. Well, to give you an introduction to India, as you all know, India is a very big country, almost 2,000 miles from north to south. It's a home to a variety of cultures and cuisines, 22 official languages, a diversity of habitats from the Himalayas to the tropics. And the best is that it's got around 1,300 species of birds. Well, I'll take you on a quick view through the satellite map which clearly shows you the major habitats, different types across the country. Firstly is in the Northwest, a large area of desert that you can see in the map. And it's got the two distinct forest belts, one along the lower Himalayan range and one along the Western Ghats. Ghats is a low mountain range along the West coast of India. Then we've got the Indo-Gangetic Plains to the south of the Himalayas, Central Indian Forest, and finally the Deccan Plateau, which ex extends across the middle of the peninsula. I mean, it can be pretty difficult for you to plan out a budding holiday into a big country like this with different landscapes and habitats. And this is where Partnership for International Birding can help you choose the region based on your preferences, interests, and target species. Well, as Charles mentioned, we do a variety of tours for Partnership for International Birding. And we got Goa, Endemics and More, which is my home state on the West Coast, and a good introduction to India. The Western Ghats, Endemics and More for the South, which we combine with the uh, an extension to the Andaman Islands. Oh, wow. And then we do Northwest India, the Punjab, Rajasthan, and Gujarat, which covers three straight states through the desert region, which you have seen on the previous, previous slides. And then North India, which is the Himalayan foothills, Tigers, and Taj Mahal, looking in the Northern Plains and the low Himalayas. And then we have three tours to the Northeast India, some plains and the Eastern Himalayas, in the floodplain of the Brahmaputra River and the Eastern Himalayas, Mishmi Hills and Brahmaputra, again covering the floodplains and the hills in the extreme Northeast, where we find a few additional endemics. And lastly, I'm a Falcon Migration Plus, which takes us to Nagaland, focusing on the incredible movement of the Amur Falcons. Well, getting on to the first tour, I mean, Goa, Endemics, and more. Goa is a very small state in the, on the west coast of India, and it's a good introduction to birding into the, into the country. Goa was under the Portuguese rule for over 400 years until 1961. And as a result, it's got a totally different feel to the rest of India with its distinct architecture, culture, and cuisine. I mean, it's, it's a very small state, but 160 kilometers long and has diverse habitats within a small area, which we can easily cover with very short travel time. The tour that we do stays at three bases with the maximum drive distance between sites of approximately two hours. The weather in Goa is constantly warm and dry from November to April, and that's the best birding season. And Goa has been very popular tourist destination for decades and has developed 
the tourism infrastructure and comfortable hotels throughout. So if you've not been to India, this could be the best place to start off with on a rare, very relaxed and easy introduction to the regions and the birds. Hey, Leah, what are, what are some of your favorite birds? And oh, you're going to show us more habitat. Show yeah, us some habitat yeah. But, um, yeah. Tell us about some of your favorite birds when you get, get to that part, my friend. Yeah. Well, I mean, the habitats, I mean, go extends from the foot from the coast to the foothills of the Western Ghats with a huge diversity in habitats. I mean, the coast, coastal plains include tropical beaches, mangrove lined estuaries, freshwater lakes, scrub jungles. And then we move to the central area, which is more dry and rocky plateaus. And then we move inland, which is the Western Ghats, the foothill of the Western Ghats, which is deciduous and evergreen forest, and which is also a part of the global diversity hotspot. And a lot of the area in the Western Ghats is protected area and forms a lot of the centuries within the area. Uh, I mean, on an easy tour of two weeks, 10 to 14 days, you could expect to see approximately around 270 to 310 species of birds. Uh, since the Southern India has got majority of endemics, that's 30 endemics, we could get 18 endemics in Goa out of the 30. I mean, besides that, we also get a lot of South Indian Peninsula endemics and paleatric migrants. Uh, we have an impressive selection of butterflies, a very small selection of mammals, unfortunately. And since a lot of the birding in Goa can be done on foot, I mean, it makes it very easy for photography and good birding. You also get a chance to glimpse the Portuguese colonial architecture when we travel around Goa. Well, the bird on the slide at the moment is the white-bellied sea eagle. I mean, it's quite a widespread bird. You can see it uh, in Goa regularly while you're birding along the coast and the estuaries. Taking you through some of the birds, uh, Palace's gull, one of the larger gulls found during the winter months along the coast among a selection of other gulls and terns and waders. Colored kingfisher, a localized mangrove species, is one of the total of eight kingfishers species found in Goa. We go sunbird, an endemic, is exclusive to Goa. It's among the sunbirds and flower packers. Great hornbill, one of the biggest hornbills among the three hornbills found in Goa and Sri Lankan frogmouth, one of the many nocturnal species, include a selection of night jars and owls. Uh, as Charles asked, I mean, in Goa, I mean, there's a lot of species that people look out for. And one of the highlights would be the Sri Lankan frogmouth, Indian Peter, Oriental dwarf kingfisher, so there's quite a few that add on to the list, but they're the ones that people always want to see and are right up high on their target list when visiting Goa. Now, Leo, how many, um, like when you do nocturnal birding, you do it, this is, it's, it's what about a 12, 13, 14, 14 night tour, I forget, but let's say over two, two weeks, how many days, nights do you typically do a little bit of we do, nocturnal we do birding? Nights, we do two nights of nocturnal birding. Yeah, so in two nights of nocturnal bird birding, um, and I know some of the owls are sort of just at dusk, but um, how how many owls and night night jar species do you tally up? We, uh, I mean, most of the night jar species we try and get on day roost, with the okay. ex yeah, with the exceptions of Jordan night jar, which we try and get during our night walks, and uh, sometimes we get. Uh, Owls, you could get spot by Lady Galal, which we earlier used to have on a day roost, but now no longer because it, the female had died a couple of years back. And uh, we've not found another nest site or a roosting site. But 
we also get, uh, I mean, brown wood owl and things that we get on the nocturnal walks at night. So maybe between night, eye charts and owls, you get eight, eight, ten species. We get around six species. Six, six species. Well, that's just yeah. that's the chase. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, and, and typically your your nocturnal jaunts last an hour after dark, hour and a half after dark. Uh, it's approximately a, an hour or an hour after dark. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um. Any anybody else got any other questions? Yeah, you're you're hitting it. So this is this is what I'm hoping to say. So. Great. You know. You know the next family. I mean, Leo knows I am not a big raptor person, so I'm not going to go there. Um, but um, sunbirds and flower pet ackers are beautiful little birds. How many different sunbird species and how many different flower packer species do, do you uh, typically see? I mean, we've got, uh, we get two flower packer species and uh, five sunbird species. Okay. So that's nice. Yeah. Um, all right. Oh, and hornbills are another sort of Asian favorite family. Um, hard, hard to miss, but nice to see. Um, how many? What, what, what hornbills do you get in Goa? We get, we get four hornbills. We get the great pied. We get Malabar pied. We get Malabar gray and the Indian gray hornbill. Gotcha. So two are mega nice and two are yeah. Okay, my friend. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I would say that that question carries over to every trip. So those are good <laughs> questions, Charles. Yeah, I mean, I am, I am, I mean, as Leo knows, I am a sucker for little beautiful little birds. And then there are just some families I truly love, like hornbills, because they're, you know, they're just big and huge. I mean, they're ridiculously cool. Um, well, those are the ones sure. I highlighted in the itineraries. I highlighted them in green. And there you go. Oh, the other, in, in bee eaters, again, in sort of a widespread big species group, you get, what, green, blue-tailed, anything else for, for, and chestnut -headed. for, bee, for bee eaters? And chestnut-headed. Ah, and chestnut-headed bee eaters. Nice. Um, all right, man. Um, Oh, and on the coastal bit, now, I mean, obviously, migration is a thing here. Um, and quite frankly, Palace is called a nice bird. Um, what other kind of nice things do you get on along the coast? Um, we get nearly all the other waders and gulls that you get around everywhere else, because most of the waders migrate down during the winter down south. Right. Yeah, so we get nearly nearly all, with the, ex with the exception of a few, but we get a nice selection of waders and gulls that move right yeah. down. And small Pratt and Cole is nice. Oh, that's like a field yeah, bird. Yeah, we get that as well. Um, oh, what about the um, the coursers and those and those guys? No, we don't get those in Goa. Okay, and there you go. Well, okay, man. Um, any yeah. other questions on Go? Oh, oh, at all. I'm gonna look at the list of people here. Got to pull not up my not a question, here. but a, a quick comment. I yeah, saw a number. Can. can you all hear me? Yeah, we can. Yeah. Okay, I, I saw a number of hornbills when I took a trip to Thailand, and to me, they're the closest to the prehistoric birds that I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> they, um, they, they are beautiful. They are amazing. Yeah, I actually have I have this poster behind me of uh, feathered dinosaurs, but um, I'm truly like a city sunbird in Madagascar. Ma I love anything with like leathery aces. I mean, I love those little birds that have those little prehistoric links. That's really cool. Great comment. Um, any other questions at all? And then we'll. Okay. Oh, are we going to talk about the Western Ghats yet? Go, my yeah. friend. <laughs> yeah. Well. The second tour that we do focuses on the Western Ghats and the endemic species. The Western Ghats, like I said earlier, is a range of low mountains along the west coast of India. And I mean, this area is a global biodiversity hotspot with high degree of endemism, with 30 endemic birds, 16 endemic mammals, 
over 80% of its 179 amphibian species are endemic and over 1,200 endemic flowering plants. I mean, the key habitats from the hotels to the highest peaks are protected and in a series of reserves, which make accessing them easy and enjoyable. Besides the beautiful scenery among the India's major tea growing areas. I mean, the habitats at low elevations is rich tropical rainforest. And then you've got dry deciduous woodlands and scrub jungles. And in the highest hills, much of the native hab habitat over here has been replaced with uh, tea, but there are some pockets of shola that remain. And those are the ones that we focus on. And these shola pockets form sky islands. And it is this geography of habitat and everything that has encouraged the endemism over here. Well, on the trip around uh, of 14 days to 16 days, you can expect to see around 250 species in the Western Ghats. And we get a majority of 27 out of the 30 endemic birds. I mean, the one, the three that we don't get is one is the Vigo sunbird that you've seen earlier, which is restricted to Goa. And the other two are the laughing thrushes, which have been recently split. And the areas at the moment are inaccessible to basically Western tourists because they are mainly in private properties and private farms. We do also get a nice variety of endemic mammals. You get the Nilgiri Ta, Nilgiri Langur, Malabar giant squirrel. And then there's also the architecture as we travel around of the colonial hill stations. We also offer the optional extension to the Andaman Islands, which by itself adds up to 21 species out of the 30 birds endemic to the islands. Dark-fronted babbler is one of the Western Ghats endemics that is found in Goa and Southern India. Malabar trogon, the only trogon that you get in Southern India, which is endemic to the area. Small sunbird, I mean, one of the common forest sunbirds found in Goa and the southern India. Indian pita is one of, as always, the pita that is well sought of. I mean, everybody's got it high on their list. And it's a species that migrates down during the winter and is common in Goa and in southern India. Hotspotted woodpecker, one of the smallest woodpeckers which is found in Southern India and also in Southeast Asia. Well, moving on. We Can I on ask a question or two hey, about- Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's jump in on some more questions on Western Ghats, shoot. Is there someone else that hasn't spoken that wants to ask a question first? No, shoot, 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 and then we'll invite okay. some others in. So because these, the, the two areas you talked about are relatively near each other, it seems like yeah. there'd be the possibility of doing some kind of combined trip. Is that yes, true yes. or not so true? It is, it is true. It is and possible. How many days would it take if you were, you know, trying to not duplicate species constantly, but hit, you know, just hit the key species? 20 days, 21 days, 24 days? No, you could do it in around 18 days. I mean, where you could do, uh, I mean, if you're just looking only for the endemics, basically, I mean, you could do it in 18 days where you do uh, 10 days in Goa and then you do eight days down South India. Uh -huh. And that should hopefully cover up all the endemics. And in the process, would you hit 400 plus species or? Uh, you would hit, uh, you would hit around around 400 species, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Days, 18 days. Dave, and we can um, truly, I mean, most sort of intense listeners, you know, do Western gods. And then, you know, if we went to the PE book, booked on a typical Western gods tour, which is, I think, 16 days, 15 nights or about that, you know, just getting the group group to agree to add three or four days to get the rest would not be that difficult. And, um, we, you know, the price of our, like, 16 days, 15 night tour, maybe our tour oh. look, look that up. Mm. But I think it's, it's, I think it's really in the mid... I think it's like 3,500 to 4,000. So an 18 day tour would probably add five or 600 bucks to that. So like we could, we could sort that out with, with most groups, not every group, but most. Um, and we do build groups, you know, some, some people get confused about this. They think they need to come with to us with a group of bird watchers, which we really do appreciate, but um, you know, 80, 90% of our tours are, you know, we get a couple bookings here, we get a couple bookings there, and then, you know, we try to get six to eight bird watchers to get other, um, to do a birding tour. Um, yeah, great question, Dave Cook. Um, and truly, when I look at those photos of the Western Gods birds, I mean, holy moly, I love that heart spotted woodpecker, and I love that small sun on bird. They were beautiful. And those are those are western, but small small sunbird is a go Owen bird too. Yeah, both the hot spotted and the small sunbird are going birds too. Hmm. The go and birding I need to do. Yeah. Um, any other good quest questions out there? All questions are welcome. Looks like we gained a participant. And, and you too. say sixteen days tours, right? Northeast India. Uh, no, no, no. The uh, Western Gods tour. Western ah, the Western Gods. Gods. Okay, let me tell you. Right Which now. is southern in India. Mm -hmm. Leo's going to get a set, or Archer is going to get set price in a little bit. Any other good questions, Randy? You got a question uh, out there? And don't have any un, un, What? Western Gods and then make some more. Yeah. 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 Twenty nine ninety. Twenty nine ninety, yeah. So if we did an eighteen day tour, it would probably be, you know, thirty five hundred plus. Yes, but exactly, not because this one is like expensive. eleven days, yeah. Okay, so that's eleven days tonight. Mm -hmm. Okay, so probably closer to the high three three thousands, but not too bad. Um, uh, Randy, did you have a question at all? No, not yet. Okay, okay, good. Um, Dave, Pan, Patsy, Dee Dee, any other questions, folks? We're good on, on again. Okay, great. Let's hear about, I believe, Northwest India next. Uh, I'll, I'll move on to the desert landscape and the tour that we do takes you through Punjab, Rajasthan, and Gujarat, which is three states. And we do a lot of birding through the fringes of the Thar Desert, the scrub savanna of grasslands and the acacia shrubs. Uh, the main focus is on the desert specialities and a lot of birds that also are seen in Central Asia. And after the monsoons, as the rains recede in October, they leave behind a lot of flooded areas across the region. And during the winter, there is an incredible congregation of cranes, flamingos, pelicans, and other water birds. And this makes the area really special and different to a lot of other areas in India that you can bird. Well, the habitats in the West is mainly the Thar Desert extending right up to Pakistan. And then in the East is the scrub Acacia scrub, was savanna grasslands, which in India at the moment are being threatened, threatened habitat type, the savanna grasslands. And then you've got the wooded hills at the edge of the Arawali range and the seasonal wetlands, like I said earlier, with the big congregations of the flamingos, pelicans, and cranes. Uh, on a typical tour of the Punjab, Rajasthan, and Gujarat, 
we get around 300 species. And I mean, most of which are desert species in combination with water birds in large numbers. Uh, we also have a very good chance for the great Indian bustard, which is a critically endangered species, which you can see on the slide at the moment. And there's approximately around 150 birds left in the wild. We also have a few endemic mammals, out of which the Asiatic wild ass is one. And then we travel through fascinating regions of rich history, including Jaisalmer, which was once an important trading post for the Silk Route. Sociable plover is a critically endangered lapwing, which breeds up in Russia and Kazakhstan, and then migrates to the West Asia and Northeast Africa in winter. Asian desert warbler, Another desert warbler, typically warbler, which breeds in the deserts, Central and Western Asia and Europe. Hypercolis, a Middle Eastern species resembling the waxwing, and which breeds, feeds mainly on the berries of the Salvadora, which is also called the toothbrush tree which the branches were used centuries as a natural toothbrush. Green Avidavid is an endemic bird to the subcontinent and found in Mount Abu in the Aravali Hills. Aesthetic wild ass, the endemic am a mammal found only in Gujarat's little run of Kutch. Yes. Uh, and then we move on to northern India. Oh, let's, let's, uh, let's, let's take some time on Northwest India questions. I do have a couple. Mm -hmm. um, I'll start it off, and then others, of course, are welcome to join in. Um, and don't forget, you can always text your questions in. So um, Northwest India, um, uh, how, much of the, how much of the tour is in urban versus rural areas? You fly into a fairly large city or a fairly small city, and then the rest is like desert, not that we, populated. We, is that uh, what I mean, most most of the most of the birding is done out in the desert. We fly so at night, you spend your in, in towns of how big? We fly into Ahmedabad, which is a big city. Uh huh. And uh, and then we move dry straight out into the desert. Okay. Yeah. So okay. then we and the towns that you stay in in the desert are little towns of the small, 10, 20, small people. typical villages. Yeah. So typical village under 10,000 people. Yeah. Maybe smaller. And some okay. of them. Are and during the day, you're basically out, out in the desert, out, out, out in the field. And there you go. Yeah. Um, any other questions? I have a few more. Anybody got anything else? Yeah, well, I tell a lot of birding tours. Yeah, shoot. Yeah, uh, it's just a process question. Somebody's intermittently sure, type. Someone's intermittently typing on a very noisy keyboard, and it makes it hard to hear Leo. And if someone oh, okay, whoever's doing that would stop would be great. Thanks. So if you get a loud that's keyboard. That's me, and I'll mute myself. Thanks, Steve. Um, or Dave. Um, thanks for the good question i think that's steve um hey we have a couple more things is um uh another nice thing about northwest india that a lot of people don't understand is there's an extension and on the extension trip besides the asiatic lion which is you know a big cat that a lot of people want to see um i mean one it's hard to get asiatic lion anywhere else in the world right yeah i mean they're restricted just to the small area of the gear national park we just saw some gotcha. Yeah. Um, so if you want to see Asiatic lion, you got to kind of do Northwest in, in, in India tour. You've got to go to India and, and just and, and, visit and, you. Yeah. And how many total species do you add 
on the extension, or is it just mostly the lion thing? Uh, no, you will add another, at least another 15 to 20 species. Yeah, okay. So the extension is not a big birding thing, but it is a big mammal thing for- It's a big mammal thing. Big cat because, bands. And yeah, truly, but, we've run this tour, uh, we run this tour about once a year. Sometimes we run it twice. Yeah. And um, I think we've just done the extension um, about half the time. Does that sound yeah. about right? Yeah. 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 But we have big cat fans. We have a good local guide. So even if we have small yeah. numbers on the extension, we can run the tour. Um, we can run the extension. Um, yeah. I, I, I have no other questions, believe it or not. Anybody else got any other questions at all? Well, how long is yeah. the extension? The extension so, so it's how, yeah. Yeah, Charles. No, no, no. How, how, how long is the extension? I just want to make sure you got the extension is four days. Thank you. And I have a question about this slide of the Asiatic wild ass. Um, it looks like there are a couple of large birds um, just beyond the two asses on the left. Could you tell us what they the grains? Which 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 crane species are common uh, cranes? Oh, that's common crane. Okay, that's that's, that's its Britishness coming out. You know, crane. It should be common crane, of course. But of course, we don't know what they are. Um, excellent question, Patsy. It occurred to me as well. Um, any other questions in the Northwest on the Northwest in in India? Oh, a couple of times you mentioned that areas are or species are endangered or vulnerable. And I'm, you know, as you go, I'm curious in terms of particular areas of what's uh, going on or what kind of the, both the history and the projection of, uh, of habit, uh, habitat loss or, or what's going on and what that means for India and their wildlife. I mean the the species that's there on the on the slide at the moment, the Great Indian Bustard. Uh, it's mainly endangered and critically endangered because a loss of habitat. Uh, a lot of the scrubland is being converted into farmland, and the birds, uh, the habitat for the birds is just getting shrinking. It's getting smaller and smaller. Besides, there's a lot of hunting as well. And the birds are hunted, not in India, but also in Pakistan. Mm. So the numbers have really dropped. And uh, I mean, we are doing a program to uh, build up the numbers and everything. And things are looking good, but it does take a lot of time once things go way beyond right. any help. So yeah. And but at the moment, yeah. Uh, not to believe it, but is is the killing for food? Uh, I mean, uh, in Pakistan, I think they're mainly just killing it. I mean, it's just the thrill of shooting the big birds down. Okay. It's like, it's just game and just mm -hmm. the fun of it. But uh, then, mm -hmm. the loss is mainly because of the habitat. And the farming, what kind of farming is going on? I mean, this cotton cotton, they're growing cotton, which okay. doesn't help the birds at all. Right. So it's mainly all being converted yeah. to cotton farms, cotton fields. Yeah. Wow, tough. And, yeah. um, but politically as the sort of Indian middle class grows, I mean, there is, I mean, one, one thing that struck me on, on the Northern India trip, and I assume it's true throughout the country, um, there are a lot of birders and wildlife lovers and photographers out there. I mean, there's sort of a growing interest in protecting wild wildlife. Is that true, or yeah, they, that sort they, of I goes mean, and wanes? I mean, recently it has picked up quite a bit, so there is a lot of uh, conservation and protection going on. And uh, yeah. but some things have gone beyond repair, so it's and it's also a lot of political influence as well, which does yeah. not help in certain conservation projects. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and so there's just, I mean, I mean, I know there's been a change of governments uh, in the last 
the Modi government? Are they are they are they pretty pro environmental protection, or are they sort of mixed? Because we I mean, have a vast uh, party with a lot of in interest, right? I mean, uh, there is and there is not. I mean, the government does gotcha. does put in efforts to try and protect certain things and certain areas, but at the same time, they've got to the infrastructure has to be built up. So some things have to go on. Yeah. So it's, it's different ways. So there's pressures to destroy there's habitat, pressures, but yeah. there's also there's, yeah. a, a rise in interest in protection. So that balancing act will sort itself out. Yeah. Probably yeah. not where we would like to see it go, but not so terrible either. Um, That's right. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right, man. Any other questions before we move up? Um, to uh I'm trying to think what's next oh um do i even know what's next northern sun other no no northern, northern is next yeah yeah anything else before we move on to north india no nope. are 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 you seeing me any text questions that i'm missing nope nope i got one i'd rather reply via text okay excellent thanks folks all right go my friend well, the next, the next area that we do is a classic India tour that everybody, nearly everybody does on their first visit to India. It's uh, whether it's culture or wildlife, it's the North India tour, which covers the North Himalayan foothills, tigers, and Taj Mahal. I mean, it takes part of the region, like the Golden Triangle, and so it's mainly covered by a lot of uh, Western tourists and everybody. Now this tour has got an excellent introduction to India and it covers a range of habitats and a selection of species across a wide area. And most of it is well developed for tourism. We begin with the wetlands rivers and scrub jungles in the plains before traveling up north into the low Himalayas and then down into the foothills. On this tour, you get chances to bird on foot and by Jeep. And we do a few boat trips in various national parks and some of the world famous wetlands that we go to like the Bharatpur. The habitats that we come across in the plains is mainly acacia scrub, semi-desert, waterways and wetlands, and then you go up to the foothills, as tropical deciduous forest, all moss trees, vitrodendrum, and then you come down to the foothills and you get the terrai zone with mainly rivers that have been fed by these snow mountains and all washed floodplains and grasslands. On a typical tour of North India, I mean, because we do a range of habitats, we pass through, we expect to see around 370 plus species. Uh, which cover desert species, grassland specialities, water birds, and forest species. Uh, birding in the foothills is characterized by fast moving feeding flocks and busy feeder stations that we get to. Uh, we also have the chance to visit some of the iconic, uh, get a chance to see some of the iconic mammals like the tiger, and Asian elephant when we visit the national parks like Corbett and Rantambur. Uh, besides that, we also have chances for the Gangetic dolphin when we do the boat trip up the Chambal River. And not to miss out on a visit to the Taj Mahal, which is en route and a splendors of the Mughal Empire that a lot of people want to see. Some of the birds that we get during this tour is we look out for small flocks of Indian schemas on the banks of the Chambal River. 
It's one of the cleanest rivers, waterways in India. Great barbet, an Asian barbet native to the Indian subcontinent. Kimmel and ruby throat is another sort of sort of the bird. I mean, it's split from the Chinese ruby throat found in uh, further east. Small niltava, another native bird to the Indian subcontinent. And well, the Bengal tiger, which we have chances of in two of the reserves that we visit, the Rantabur National Park. Okay, so we're going to actually wrap it up with Northern India today because we are running over time. But we're going to take some time for some questions. And uh, anybody got any quest questions out there? Um, so for the Northern India or that, that one trip, the um, how many sun, sunbirds and hornbills and bee eaters? The we don't have many bee eaters on the uh, Northern India trip. Uh, sunbirds, we've got approximately five species of, uh, six species of sunbird. Hornbills, three species of hornbills. Yeah. But a lot of other nice families. Yeah. Um, I don't know if this question is going to come out there, but I'm going to put it out there. Um, truly, I know when you and Jen design India tours, you're always careful to put a couple tries in for tiger. Just a, I don't, nobody likes the word guarantee. So I always like go to, like go to the other quantification out of like maybe 40, well, let's just say 40 North India tours you've run. Have you guys ever missed a tiger on any of them? Once. Once, so may eighty two percent. All my of years of all my years of birding and doing safaris, we missed tigers once. Once, okay. Wow. And 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 again, and that was just your typical tour with two national park. Uh, yeah, it was a typical uh, tour. Deep, deep trip and, and unfortunately, you missed it twice. <laughs> yeah, it just it, we just we just yeah. missed it. We were just unlucky. <laughs> yeah, and truly, when I did the northern India trip with you all, I think. We saw one, two, three, four, three. I think we saw. Yeah. I know we saw at least five tigers in like either one trip, maybe two. So, and I think totally on that tour, it was close to like eight tiger views. So yeah. you can. So usually you get the top I tiger, and then and then I just want people to not miss the fact that you see river dot often, which is truly an incredible mammal that you see on the Chamba River. And um, and there you go. And truly the mix of beautiful Asiatic species and Indian species are really, really nice um, on, on, on this tour. And you know, the Taj Mahal is what it is. Um, it is, a lot of people want to see it. It takes a couple hours um, and, uh, and you know, it's obviously a cultural event. So I think we got a couple trip birds on the river behind the Taj Mahal, maybe. Um, any any other questions out there? So I was actually India? very curious about- yeah, shoot, uh, Brandon. Yeah, I was very curious about the North, North East India. So <laughs> I don't know if you can do a two seconds. Well, snap. we're gonna we're gonna do another, we'll do another call on Northeast in India and probably, two or three months and I just re and, and Randy by the way is signed up for the Northeast in India trip so I know you want to spend some time there um, and it's truly it's Leo's favorite Indian birding trip <coughs> um, Northeast India the remote Himalaya will have to wait for another day but we will get to it um, that's good she's not alone <laughs> yeah 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 it's truly it's pretty spectacular um, is that going to be any 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 other questions on on northern India before we call it a day? I'm afraid. Quick question on Northwest. Um, sure, shoot. 
I'm sorry, northern, the northern trip that you just yeah, were talking sure, about. Sure. Approximately how many endemics would we normally run into on that trip? Uh, we, don't, we don't have many endemics up on the Northern India tour. Okay. Because, yeah, it's uh, a lot of the species overlap with Southeast Asia. Okay. Yeah, so we don't have many endemics up in the Northern India. But it gives you a nice species lift of around 370 plus species in a tour. Yeah. 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 And, and, and Leo, like most bird guys, always, always ballpark himself low. It's really a three seven avenue to like four ten four twenty honey plus. I mean, yeah, trip. four ten four ten four twenty is the highest. I mean, we always take three seventy as yeah as the bottom line, yeah. so it yeah keeps us safe. Yeah, 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 yeah. I hate those safe numbers, as you know. <laughs> I every everybody knows I'm a little bit pushy when it comes to uh, expecting a lot from our guides, and most of them do, do deliver on a regular basis. <laughs> Um, and well, that does bring always, up another you point. You always get appreciated when you give something more than you project. <laughs> <laughs> um, is we do have bird frequency lists for all of our Indian birding tours. So um, if you want a frequency list, just email me at charles at pibird.com and we will get you a frequency list. Um, and basically it's like over the last 10 trips, how many times have we seen this species? It'll give you a good feel for this more tougher to get species and the stuff that's more common. Um, uh, and there you go. So do e email away. And we're gonna probably start following up on these video conferences more with uh, um, more information about the tour, the tour, the pricing, the, the link to the website and the, and the bird list. And the price, Dave Cooks. You got a call? I think you've got a hand up there. Are you? Are you got a question? I already Dave asked Cooks, my question. A, oh, I got you. Good, 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 good. Any other questions out there? No, thanks. Uh, thanks Great. to everyone for their time. Yeah. Hey, and I just want to do a couple administrative things here. Um, so um, this is a video recorded conference. We do put it on Facebook. If you do not want your your voice heard on the conference or want us to edit you away in some way, please let us know. We have, we do appreciate your privacy and we do appreciate your participation. And um, you can email operations at pibird.com if you want to um, exclude your video participation. Um, and then um, we are the Partnership for International Birding. I think we've demonstrated well today our sort of um, use of expert bird guides, which we do around the world. Because we're not flying guides in from around the world to lead the tours, our prices are often uh, 20, in the case of India, probably 30% less than our typical competition. Um, and uh, what else do I have to say? Um, oh, we do keep our group small, six to eight P -E -E people. Because of these partnerships we have around the world, we often have um, better choices of lodging that sort of fit a birding tour, um, sort of nicer places for your mom, honey. And, um, and there, there you go. And, and we will schedule the uh, Northeast India discussion sometime in the next two or three months. We'll get that, that out here in the next um, blink of an eye, that being probably in two weeks, and um, we'll announce that date. Um, anything else before we sign off? And I do appreciate everybody's participation. So Can I throw in questions? a quick appreciation? Sure, thanks. Uh, it's important to me that you heavily rely on local guides. And the reason besides their knowledge is that it helps keep the money that we're spending in the countries that we're going to. So that's something that I think is important and I appreciate you doing it. Hey, it, and it truly, it makes sense from an economic birding point of view. And, and, and truly, I, I, I mean, the other thing I always like to point out about guides, if you've been guiding someplace for 25 years and have done 200 birding trips, you know, if you're missing a bird species, you know, local guides know which back road to drive down to find that bird <laughs> versus people who are not from that place. Um, plus they speak the local languages and they just know how to, they have local contacts that can help find, find stuff. So 
our expertise, yeah. I don't think can be beat. I had a question um, about the language. Anything else? I was a question about the languages that we would encounter. Typically, it'd be Hindi, I'm guessing, but in northern, especially in northern India, is there other like Nepalese, or is it primarily? It's, it's uh, in Goa. In Goa, we've got a dialect which is called Konkani. Oh. In southern India, it's right from Malayalam to Telugu, Marathi. In Gujarat, it's Gujarati. Then in northern India, it's Hindi. And then you go up to the Northeast, it's uh, Assamese, and then they've got the different dialects as well. Um, and then out of those many, few people many? in Goa speak Portuguese as yeah. well. Yeah. Well, I was kind of wondering if we were going to be, <laughs> what, which is the Northeast, I'm thinking, which languages would be good to just get a, a foundation for? I mean, everybody speaks English. Everybody. Yeah, I know, but. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, Hindi is the best because everybody speaks Hindi. Okay. Because uh, Assamese is quite hard to follow and quite hard to speak. I mean, it's a different dialect totally. But Hindi is a bit better. I mean, you can learn a few words of Hindi, like thank you, dhanyavad, shukriya, and things. Yeah, just a few terms, yeah. Just yeah. to put a smile on somebody's face when you say them. As long as you say them <laughs> the right way, not the wrong way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's our responsibility to at least be able to... Yeah, I know. It's, yeah, Hindi, Hindi is the one that's totally spoken all over. Gracias. Thank yeah. You. Yeah. Um. Ba, 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 ba. Any other good questions? Any text there, Arturo? Nope. Nope. Not on my end. Nope. Hey, man. I think we'll call it a wrap. Hey, you guys. Thank well, you much. Thank you, Look everybody. out for an e-blast today, which will announce our next four video conferences. Um. Off the top of my head, that includes Peru, Uganda, Alaska, and I'm missing one. Oh, and Vietnam. So uh, yeah, check yep. it out. We'll look forward to seeing you guys again. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, everybody.